Um, if you haven't seen our other video about the Darkest Dream, check it out. Where we open up and talk about the first of their box sets by Gooey Cube. Uh, this one is the Foulest of Spirits, the second chapter yes. of seven. I think you're working on seven or nine. Ooh. It depends on what happens. We're looking at a couple of different things. <laughs> oh, oh, interesting, interesting. All right, so yes, let's take a look at this. Yes, marvelous. So the last one dealt with a carnival. Yes, of horrors of sorts, in a way. What does this one deal with? It looks like more of a more gothic horror. So Zayathe, as I was telling you earlier. Alphineas Goo, by the way, at your service. My real name's Kim, but we'll do Alphineas for a while. Yes, Alphineas Goo, at your service. So this game is a little bit of epic fantasy, a little bit of medieval fantasy, a little bit of high fantasy, but then in everything we salt in a little bit of gothic horror, right? The mystery, the fear, right? The tension that it brings, because that helps broaden the scope of tale and story and that is why we do it and this one begins the real fear okay chapter one starts with sort of a a relatively innocent beginning for our hanatars players yes so it's innocent they are working at the carnival they are taking care of security a few things happen here and there they do some rescuing they find out some mysteries hmm. but the true horror of the fact that their troop is being hunted by something. And what that means begins to expose itself here in this chapter, yes. But not deeply exposed, just on the surface. For great tales begin somewhat innocuously, do they not? Hmm. And then sometimes they deepen just a little bit and then suddenly your players look around and go, that is what we want. Yes, Emmanuel, that is what we want. We want them to be, oh my gosh, right? That's what we want. <laughs> I think that by the end of this chapter, with the things that happened at the end of the darkest dream, your players will be wanting to come back for more. Yes, quite a bit more, yes. Mm. So does, does do you need to have the first one to really enjoy this? Can this be played? I think that you should play the first one first, yes. Okay. I would, now... As I told you with chapter one, all of our materials, you could open them up and pretty much place the dungeons, they're not all dungeons, they're events, right? Mm -hmm. Place them anywhere, right? And, and literally not even run the campaign, you could just cut it up into pieces, use the handouts mm -hmm. and all those things. Okay. But this tale, this tale is crafted. This tale is designed to enthrall players. This tale is thought about, it has not been quickly manufactured, it has been... It is designed to enthrall you first as the game master then enthrall your players afterwards. I promise you when you read it, as you found with chapter one, yes, yeah. it is enthralling. Yes. So if you enjoy, if you want to have the full story experience with the game, uh, get, definitely get chapter one. But if you want to just take something and, and yes. build your own homebrew or, uh, uh, I mean, again, this, all your boxes have tons of great uh, accessories. Yes. You know, so, the, so you can enjoy that as well if you just want to pick apart the, the best parts of the of the module. Correct. Okay. And this one is interesting because they will they will have some things happen at the carnival, at the end of the carnival, but then they'll actually have to go up against a bunch of hillbillies. Now, I don't know how many times in your fantasy games you get to go up against a bunch of hillbillies, but I know in this game you go up against a bunch of hillbillies. And think about this. The sun is down. They have traveled along the dark trail deep into the woods. The banjo music is playing in the background. Right? And they come over the rise. And down in the valley is the cabin. And out in the darkness they hear. Sui! Sui! I, I, I see some piggies coming over the hill, Hez. You see them piggies coming over the hill? Oh, 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 yeah, 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 I do, Scudder. I see some coming over the hill. I think we're going to have some piggy dinner tonight. <laughs> yes. It's marvelous, yes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, excellent, excellent. Um, does, um, when it comes to the setting, is it just uh, still at the carnival? Does it go at the expansion? They are now expanding beyond the carnival and actually will be preparing to leave the area at the end of this chapter. Oh, okay. All right, so, so let's see what's inside. Mm -hmm. Marvelous. Okay. As you can see, we still have stuff still uh, <laughs> bound together. 
This is uh, a non-player character portraits. There's probably 30 of them, 40 of them in there, and they all have the information on the back about them, as well as their, their picture, which makes, of course, role-playing them much easier. Oh, excellent. Okay. And it looks like you still we still have the, um, special yes. item cards. So every... Uh, Every magic item, every special item that's kind of in the game, yes, is provided in a in a special item card. And that way you can just hand them to your players. No more reading off stats, doing all the stuff that we have to do, right? Writing them on sticky notes, they get lost, right? All that stuff. In my games, actually, if they don't have the special item card, they don't have the special item. Mm. Because they left it in the loo three inns back or something like that, yes? I, I tend to punish my players, too, for that, yeah. Oh, you didn't write that? <laughs> Sorry. You know, oh, you didn't bring the card with you? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> and you have the gooey rewards? Yes, which we uh, give out as rewards because we slow level. So because they're leveling a little slower, we give them some of these. Okay, excellent. And that comes with, of course, your letter. So tell us again what the letter is. For so those I who... always tell a, a tell a game master just a little bit about what's going on in the adventure, what's happening. But I also, I want this to be good for both newer game masters as well as game masters that have been around for a long time i want them to be able to not have to do all the work all the efforts and all that stuff and normally in the letter i give them a little bit of overview or some idea or some kind of a concept that gets them started in the game and so in in the first couple of chapters we provided our philosophy and some other items like that to enable them to be able to better understand kind of what we believe in terms yeah. of adventuring and creating enthralling deep adventures because as we talked about emmanuel my friends if you're a game master, you're an entertainer. You might want to be God, or you might want to be a, a what do you call it, a referee, or, or whatever, all these things. But in the end, do not most of us just want to hear at the end of the night? Hmm. That was a great game, my friend. When are we playing again, hmm. right? And then they send you an email in the middle of the week. Dude, what happened to my character, right? <laughs> yes, you know what I'm saying? All these kind of things happen, right? Yeah. Because they were enthralled, hmm. and they want to come back. And if people are building dice towers at your tables, or if they are on the phones, or doing all these manner of things. I had one guy one time in a game I was playing, and I wasn't GMing it, but I was playing, and he fell asleep at the table. This is not good. This oh. is not a good experience. Yes. It's not. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> we need to bring games to the table that do not have those kinds of consequences for us as game masters, because that breaks your heart, yes? Yes. <laughs> Tell us about this. So the Game Master's Reference Book has all of the tools that you need to be able to run the game. And it runs in concert. Let me pull out the adventure book. It runs in concert, if I can grab it in my room. I'm trying. I have fat <laughs> fingers. I eat too much pizza. There we go, yes. So it runs in concert with the adventure book. Okay. And as you see, we talked about this before, the spiral bound so that they lay flat and make it very easy for you behind your screen. Hmm. Same with the ref book. So now they can sit right next to each other. Make it very easy. All of the adventures contained within here, all of the... The materials, the things that happen, are all referenced back to the reference book, as well as in here are things like uh, not-so-random encounters, special secrets and information that you want to bring to the players, uh, a listing of the special items, the monsters in the game, and of course, the battle stats. Mm. So right here, we'll reference the battle stats in the page, you go to this book, and inside there is the battle stat, you run the encounter, I'll let you look it up. It is page 23. So page 23, it says right here, the boy on the branch. And right there, it says, I hope it says the boy on the branch. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the boy on the branch. So you set them down right next to each other. You can run the encounter. You're done. And your job is much easier than trying to flip back and forth between some book and some pages in the back and some pages in front. Hmm. Oh, excellent, excellent. And let's see what else you got. I see you got the uh, NPC uh, cheat sheet for yes. jam. Yes, so all of those non-player character portraits, you have a sheet that you can put together that enables them to be able to uh, uh, quickly reference those characters without having to dig through and look and search and all that manner of stuff. Right. Uh, I'm very excited about this because this is the first time that we provided a map of, of the uh, Republic of Zoranthia. Yes. Wow, that's gorgeous. Yes. And we I, did I, this. I love little things like this. I don't know. It's oh, Manuel. No, no, you are right. We wanted it to be old school. Hmm. You know what I'm saying yeah. with these? Because now you look at this, and I, you have to flash something up for them to see, right, as we're cutting back and forth, yes. But you look at this thing, and you say, Mu'uz Daron. What is that? Hmm. Let's turn that. I will tell them a tale of it fast. Turn that around. Let's see what 
Yes. You, you see this? Yes, my friends, right there. Mu'uz Daron. Long ago. Yes. When the Ethernic civilization used the high magics to manipulate everything. Yes, when the woe of ruin happened in Galcyon Thras tore the Zianthus and nearly destroyed everything in creation. One of the floating cities, far above the face of the planet of Zayathe, turned completely over and crashed right there. Yes, that is Moose Doran. It is marvelous. Mm. You like that? Uh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. Thank you. It looks like you have also... Ooh, more maps. Oh, yeah, there's, I believe, seven... There's, there's a lot of maps in this game. There, there's many different things that they do. This is the... Oh, this is the this Game is Masters the, one? And yes. The players? Okay. So, as I told you before, right, you have a Game Master version, which is keyed, and then you have a player's version that is not keyed, and then we use black sticky notes, or use our digital Fog of War to be able to do it, but they're, they're beautiful. Yeah. yeah, this is the player's version. Yes. And they will meet the caretaker. Yes. I am the caretaker. I am here to talk to you today. But perhaps after I talk to you, we'll have a have a different thing. Yes. The <laughs> caretaker. He's <laughs> I don't think he's gonna live up to his name. I just have to feel it. Right, and I see there's more maps. Yes. Which I'll just briefly show. I don't wanna give away too many of your secrets. Thank you, sir. Uh ooh. How many handouts are these? This so like all in, there's somewhere around 150 handouts, non-player character portraits. Actually, that one right there that you have, that is one of my most favorite images thus far that we have created. Yeah, it's a great story being told yes, here. Yes. And, and these the are theory, NPCs, yes. which you could, I've seen the photos. And yes, the, uh, they are right in here. All of them. That okay. is Mother Salvenza, Brian, uh, Anton, the priest, and little Vizzy. Mm. Yes, she has the sight. Look at that. You know, more, uh, so many, wow. It's a lot of great stuff in here. Props, um, images, encounters. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, there's the caretaker. That is the caretaker's little stoned cottage, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see, oh, this is a scary place. Is this where my players are going to go? <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, that's a scenario of sorts, yeah. Um, yeah, this is beautiful. Thank you. You see the red star has risen now, yes. Mm. Yeah, look yes. Zaragast, part of the tale. Oh, that's fascinating. Mm. Again, there's, there's so much you can pull from. And if, again, if, if you don't want to do the entire uh, storyline so far, it's just, that's, I mean, there's so much to mind here. Yes. You know. People spend $25 on a stack of little special items cards, yep. let alone how much time they would have to spend on the internet to even try to find anything near what is going on here. Humphrey Humblebunder. Yes, Humphrey Humblebunder! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, some of this is just, wow, it's incredible. A gnome. Yes, he's a paladin. Yes, yeah, he is a pompous <laughs> little guy. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Oh, yes. That is actually one of the members of the Haunted House troop. Okay. Yes, and there's Mother Salvenza herself. Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of just, there's so much to for you to go through and just have fun and just read the backstory to a lot of these characters. Wow, impressive. Thank you, sir. Oh, this is all this is all very incredible. Where, um, I, I assume you can find it at gooeycube.com. That's correct. Yes, gooeycube.com. Gooey cube. Like uh, like a gooey cube. <laughs> <laughs> and is this still under fifty dollars? Yes. Yes, wow. my friend. So we. Uh, we're right now finishing off the first print run that we made, which we have about, uh, well, we have some left. Okay. And, but we're getting close to being sold out of those. Those are actually sold at $40 for the physical on our website, or you can get $45 and get the physical and the digital. Hmm. But I think I've got to go up $5 in price. I don't want to go up any more than that, but I think we've got to go to $45 for the physical product. It's just so expensive, as you can see, to produce yeah. all this. But that's still less than one of those single books that you buy and Contentually, this is not even a contest. Yes, it's not even a contest. Yes, yeah. it's still be entertained. Very good. Yes, it's still a very good deal. Get it while you can. <laughs> and you'll be at other conventions. To yes, we're going to twelve with twelve conventions. I think this next year for sure. I don't know all of them yet. We'll post them on of our Facebook and our website and uh, elsewhere as we move forward. Let people know. 
Uh, we have a marvelous Facebook group if people wanted to be a part of that. It's called the GUI Game Masters Den of Enlightenment. And all you have to do is to go to the GUI Cube Facebook page. And you can sign up there. And we'd be, you'd be most welcome. Excellent. Thank you very much. Marvelous. And again, it's GUICube.com. And let us know what you think in the comments below. Have a great day. Ha <laughs> ha!